What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm down at Hendrick Lexus North Lake. We get to take a look at this 2022 Lexus LS 500 F Sport. So huge shout out to them for providing this sedan for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. All that info is down in the description. This 500 here is finished off in Obsidian and it has an MSRP just over $86,000. So to start off today's review, we're gonna take a look at what powers this LS. So underneath the hood, you'll find the three and a half liter twin turbo V6 engine. This is paired to the eight speed automatic transmission and this pumps out 416 horsepower around 6,000 RPM and 442 pound feet of torque as low as 1600 RPM. This is rear wheel drive. It weighs in right around 4,800 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, up to its top speed of 155 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 21.7 gallons. You can expect to see around 18 miles per gallon in the city and 29 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 123 inches. Its overall length is 206.1. It has a width of 74.8 and a height of 57.1 inches. As we work our way to the exterior now for this LS500, let's start off with these headlight housings. So this has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. And you'll see too that the headlights and the high beams have that horizontal design with the triple beam pattern that you can see. And then it's iconic for Lexus with this DRL design. You'll see it comes to a crisp point right in the center and then wraps back around underneath the headlights and the high beams and then we have the turn signal just underneath that it's a really nice design i love how it comes to a point you can see all the intricate bodywork too surrounding this headlight just gives it a really clean design and some of these lines break off to the hood where you can see we have really clean lines that run all the way to the base of the windshield and then those lines continue back to the sides of the hourglass design for this grille you'll see there's plenty of cutouts to provide cooling to this twin turbo engine we have the Lexus badge front and center, which also acts as the forward facing sensor for the adaptive cruise and all of that technology. You can see all the parking sensors too that are nicely integrated in the middle section of the bumper. And the surround on this model is finished off in a dark chrome. Makes it look very nice. You can see that extends to the lower section of the bumper corners on each side. And we also have more air inlets that you can see on both sides too, just to provide extra airflow and better aerodynamics. And then as we work our way to the side, you can see we have that dark chrome finish on these wheels. These are 20 inch wheels, have a really nice multi-spoke design to them. You can also see just behind the wheels, we have six piston calipers up front. There are four piston calipers in the rear. This has the full moonroof up top. You can see there's more chrome trim surrounding all of the windows. We have the power folding side mirrors that are body colored. You can see the integrated turn signal along with a little bit more chrome trim. There's also more of that dark trim running on the lower side skirt just to tie in with that front bumper. You can see it running just behind the rear tire as well. We have really clean lines though running down the side. You can see one just above the door handles there just to give it a sleek look. And then last up in the rear, you can see the Lexus badge along with some really nice contoured lines in the trunk. This has a backup camera with all the parking sensors. We have the LED taillights that have a really nice design along with the turn signal running in the lower section. And then down below, you can see more of that chrome trim surrounding the dual exhaust. So that is a look at the exterior for this all new LS500. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior now. I have the vehicle locked and the key in my pocket. You can see there's more chrome surrounding the door handle. And if I just place my hand in the door handle there, it will automatically unlock where now we can take a look at this beautiful door panel. You can see leather and suede, a lot of really nice stitching. There's this cool trim piece just behind the release handle. We have all the memory seating adjustments. There's more leather surrounding that. And then all of the window and side mirror adjustments along with lock and unlock are on the floating grab handle here. It's a really nice design. You can grab pretty much anywhere you want on this to close the door. You'll see there's a little bit of storage space down below there. And then we have the 12 speaker Mark Levinson audio sound system. And then on the door sill, you can see Lexus, which is an illuminating badge. We have F Sport down on the floor mats. And now working our way to these beautiful seats. You can see F Sport up in the headrest. We have leather and suede, really nice pattern running down the inserts too. You can see more of that two-tone design along with all the stitching. And then down on the side, you can see all the automatic adjustments. Now it's time to work our way to the interior for this F Sport model. And you'll see right off the bat, I have the driver door open up all the way. We have a low door sill and you actually step down a bit over the door sill to enter and exit. And with that floating grab handle, it doesn't matter again where I grab that, we can easily shut the door. And working our way to this steering wheel now, you'll see it's completely covered in leather. We have solid and perforated leather, along with some really nice stitching that you saw on the door panel. The F Sport badge is down below, and you can see there's some more trim on both sides. Let's go ahead and start this up though. With my foot on the brake, we have that button over on the right side, and we can bring this to life. 
And you'll see right now over on the left side of the screen is the engine temperature along with the odometer. On the right side, you can see the fuel gauge along with your gear selector. And right in the middle, we have the tack along with your miles per hour and some other information that you can go through. You can use all these controls over on the left side of the steering wheel to do that. So right now, if I scroll down, now you can see your range. You can also pull up your TPMS. You can see your gear position as well. You can change your miles per hour to kilometers per hour if you'd like to. We do have a blank screen there. You can look at your adaptive cruise, so when you have that on and running. And then just by pushing on the back arrow, you can see the entire tack shift to the right, where we can go through some more settings over on this left screen. You can go through all of the technology features that are available for this model, being able to turn them on and off and adjust them as you need to. You can also look at your heads up display. You can look at a lot more technology here, your blind spot, and just go through all that information. You can scroll over to any messages. You can pull up your adaptive cruise, look at your music. You can even pull up the compass. And then you have all that information that I just went over in the middle of that tack. You even have a boost gauge. You can look at your eco meter, your G-force meter. You have your gear position again, and then your TPMS. So you can pull all that information up in a little bit larger of a view if you'd like to see that, or if you want to have that tack front and center. It's a really nice design. And then also over on this left side, you can see volume. We have Bluetooth and voice commands. Over on the right side is all the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings. There's also tuning and modes for the radio. There's also the steering assist. And then you can see the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters are finished off in that brush trim just to give it a really nice look. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, you can see down below we have the fuel cap release along with the trunk release. There's a little bit of storage just above that. We also have the heads up display button so you can push on that and I don't know if the camera will pick this up but going from left to right there's the compass along with the adaptive cruise and the steering assist and then over on the right side is the tack, miles per hour and what gear you're in. So it's really nice to have that front and center. You can see this trim piece just above that along with more leather and stitching. We have one air vent. There's also suede covering the entire headliner just gives it a great touch. You'll see leather up on the dash too. And then coming back to the gauge cluster, I'm gonna talk about these dials on both sides. So if I use this left one here and turn it down, that is for snow mode, so you can see that appear. And if I push on it, that is how you can turn traction control off. Over on the right side, we have different driving modes. So going all the way down, you can see comfort. If I twist on it one more time, that is for eco mode. And then if I twist this dial up, you can see Sport S and then Sport S Plus. And then just by pushing on the end of it, we can go back into normal mode and you'll see the tack will change too, depending on the driving mode that you're in. And then as we work our way to the center screen now, this is a touchscreen system, or you can use all these buttons down below where you'll see map and menu along with this trackpad just behind it. If I click on menu, that will pull up all these icons here where you can look at your destination for your map, you can go into your audio, you can quickly push on that back arrow to get back to this information. And if I push on menu again, you can see phone, different apps that you can go into. So you can update those as you need to, just depending on what you like. We have projection, which is how you can pair your phone to this system. There's also info and setup in your climate control, so you can quickly get to all this information and go through all that as needed. So it's a really nice system to go through, and it's definitely very large. You'll see a clock over on this left side too. And then we have two air vents just below that. There's all the physical buttons for your climate controls. So if you don't wanna use them on that upper screen, you can quickly get to your fan speed. You'll see all that up here as well. We also have a small screen there where you can see your temperature for driver and passenger. So you can quickly get to that. We also have off and a few other buttons. There's power and volume for the radio over on this left side. And then the second dial just behind that is tuning for the radio. So you can adjust both of those and you'll see there's a few more buttons right in the middle. And then working your way below that, you'll see there's a CD player. We also have the auto hold assist that you can push on and off. You can see some really nice wood trim on the lower section. And then over on this right side, if I push on this, that reveals two cup holders. You can see a 12 volt down there as well. And in front of all these controls, we have the leather wrap shifter. So it's a really interesting shift pattern. In order to put this vehicle into reverse, you're gonna go over to the left and up. It's gonna pop its way back into the middle there. And now you'll see the backup camera. The side mirrors will also fold down to give you a little bit better visibility. And you have two different angles that you can look at along with adjusting the guidelines. So just depending on how you'd like to see those, you have plenty of graphics. To put this into drive, we'll go over and down. And then if you wanna go into the manual setting, just pull it back, you'll see it pop 
over to M. So you can shift using that or the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. And then to put it in park, you'll just click on the P and then you'll see on the back here, we have a few controls. Pushing on this button here will pull up all the seat adjustments. So you can look at that for your passenger and your driver. You have a lot of different adjustments that you can do. You can move the headrests up and down or forwards and backwards. So it's really nice to see that. So you can adjust these seats around 28 different ways which is really nice to see. We have these seat climates too. So we have the heated and ventilated controls along with the steering wheel. You can go through all that information. Really nice shortcut to get to. We also have that button here where you can get to the seats and the steering wheel as I just mentioned. And then this button over on the left side is for the sunshade in the rear. So you can push on that to raise it and then push on it again to lower it of course. You'll see on the center armrest here, it's completely covered in solid leather. If I push on this button, we can open that up where you'll see there's a lot of storage space. We have a few auxiliaries. There's even a 12 volt too. We have this tray in the backside. So you can easily fit a lot of information in that center armrest. And then over on the glove box, you'll see we have a lot more room for all of that. You'll see too that the air vents here also go into the trim, going all the way to the passenger side. It's a really nice intricate pattern, just giving it a great look. And then as I mentioned earlier, we have the full moonroof. We have the front and the rear seat glass there. We have all those controls up front here where you can adjust the rear sunshade along with the front sunshade and the sunroof. We have the touch sensitive dome lights. You can see some call buttons. There's also a sunglass holder up there too. And as we work our way to the back seats now, you'll see we have that same design on the door panel. That floating design for the grab handle too is just a really nice touch to see. And now at five foot 10, I'll make my way into the back where I have plenty of room. I have the front seat set at my height. You can see there's a small storage bin behind it, plenty of room for my feet and my legs there. And I have around two or three inches above my head. So it's very comfortable to be in these back seats. You'll see right in the middle too, if you don't have a center passenger, you can pull this down where you'll see we have two cup holders on the front section of it. If I open this up, there's actually a good amount of storage with two USBs. So you can charge electronics from the back here, which is great to see. We do have an adjustment for that sunshade too, so you can push on that to adjust it. And then if I push on this button over on this right side here, you can actually adjust the passenger seat. So you can bring it all the way back if you'd like to. If I push on the front section of it, you can move that seat all the way forward. So this is really good for the passenger in the back seat. If you want a lot more leg room, if you're being driven around, you can move that seat all the way forward and give yourself a lot more space. So it's really convenient to have that and then if I just push on it, we can bring it all the way back into its normal position. So that is great to see. And then right in the middle, you'll see there are two air vents along with more gloss black trim. We have the 12 volt just below that so you can charge even more electronics. And you'll see we have the carpeted floor mats just to give it a nice touch. And up top, you can see we have some mirrors. So if you'd like to look at yourself from the back seats, you can do that. We have two speakers right in the middle there. And you can also see more of this Alcantara just giving it a really nice design. And then last up, we'll take a look at the trunk storage space. So you can use the button on the key fob if you'd like to, the one inside. Or if I just push that button over on the right side, the power trunk will automatically open up and you'll see there is a lot of storage space for the sedan. It's a very deep compartment with that back seat area there. You can see we have the carpeted floor mat along with some tie down hooks so you can safely secure items. It also goes over to the driver's side and the passenger side so you can put in larger items sideways if you need to, making this a very practical sedan. And with that power trunk, I can just push this button over on the left side and it will automatically close. All right, so getting this 2022 Lexus LS 500 F Sport out on the road, this has been a really cool, luxurious sedan to check out. I love that with the F Sport package, this is pretty much fully loaded. We have all the exterior goodies as you've already seen in today's video with the wheels, the dark trim. We have a few F Sport badges around and this even has the adaptive suspension, which I forgot to talk about earlier, giving you a very smooth ride. So we're gonna see how this handles on some back roads here in just a second. But while we're at this light here, let's go ahead and pop it over into manual mode. And I can't do anything too crazy. It's a brand new vehicle, but we'll give it a little bit of gas. And without even thinking, this is up to speed. Short shifting, of course, but this has plenty of power. Once, once this gets broken in, you are definitely going to have some fun behind the wheel of this. We have rear wheel drive, so all the power is going there and it's just a smooth driving vehicle. I love how smooth Lexus's shift, especially with these paddle shifters, they're definitely functional. And it, it just gives you a really smooth ride, I love it. It's super quiet too. You can't hear the exhaust or anything. There's no road noise or wind noise. But as we come up to this right hand turn, 
not only does it handle very, very well, but we have plenty of power. And again, I'm short shifting, so you can go all the way up to around 6,500 RPM or so and really get a lot of power going in this. But aside from how it drives here, let's talk about the visibility. It's very easy to see in all directions. We have a lot of glass. So I can look over my left shoulder quickly out of that glass. I can look over my right shoulder and the pillar in the back is really not bulky at all. So it's really easy to see. We have a third glass back there that's right by the passenger's head. So you can see out of that, you can look out of the back glass. And I love the design for these mirrors. You can see in front of them on both sides. So between the A pillar and the side mirror. So that gives you a little bit extra visibility. And this is just a comfortable car to drive. If you're looking for something that has performance to it, yet you kind of want to be under the radar, a little bit understated. And so if you pulled up next to this at a stoplight, you'd have no idea. This is pretty much a sleeper. It has a lot of performance to it and it still has that Lexus classic exterior design. So it gives you that nice classic look that you're looking for with all the power underneath the hood. And so now as we switch over to the POV angle, we'll pop it into the manual setting and give it a little bit of gas. Nothing too crazy and we are up to speed. Definitely a very smooth shifting transmission. We're all the way up into eighth gear here. And I'm not sure if the GoPro can see this from that angle, but we have the heads up display and you can turn it on and off. So just depending on if you'd like to see it, I think it's really cool to be able to see what gear you're in along with your tack and your speed, of course. So that way you don't have to take your eyes off the road. If you're on back roads like this, but well, you can get another look at this interior. It is so luxurious and I have been in normal. So let's go ahead and put it into Sport Plus. So we're in Sport S Plus you'll see the entire tack there shift and we'll pop it back into manual mode. So from third gear, wow, you can definitely feel a lot more throttle response in Sport Plus S or Sport S Plus as we come around this turn now. Wow. It handles so well. So we will give it one last acceleration for today's video. It definitely has a good exhaust note to it. You know, it's not crazy loud. This is a luxurious sedan with that performance, but you can hear that exhaust note, a little bit of the engine noise too. So that's great. Even though it's very quiet with vehicles passing, you can still hear that exhaust. So it gives you that sporty drive, which is great. But I think that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive, getting behind the wheel of this 2022 Lexus LS 500 F Sport. Once again, huge shout out to Hendrick Lexus Northlake for providing this vehicle for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. All that info is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's review, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I'll see you guys in the next video.